Yeah, so um, Pelagios comments. Um, many of you may have heard of Pelagios um, before or seen one of my presentations. Um, some of you may not have. And um, I don't think I talked about Pelagios last year at CAA. So I'm aware, I'm, I was trying to remember, like, I don't want to have too much overlap between presentations. Um, but this is going to be about half of it will be. Um, uh, a refresher for those of you who are aware of what Plagios does, uh, and hopefully new if you don't. Uh, and then the second half is going to be talking um, about Pelagios Commons, which is sort of where where uh, where Pelagios uh, is headed. Uh, obviously, uh, um, I'm not the only person behind um, Pelagios. Um, there are some a, a number of other colleagues I should mention: um, Elton, Andrew, a new who's um, joined us at the, at the Austrian Institute of Technology, uh, Rainer Simon, who's been mentioned already today, and Pado Soto. Uh, and in all seriousness, um, hopefully you, um, and that's where we're going to kind of end up here, because Pelagios is going to become uh, much more decentralized as we move forward. Okay, so with the short version, what is Pelagios Commons? Uh, it's a decentralized community and infrastructure for uh, linked open geodata in the humanities. Um, the key words here, so it's decentralized in the sense that what we are trying to emphasize uh, is web thinking when it comes to collecting data together. Um, the the linked data web will not be built by one project or one institution. Uh, it's going to be built by all of us collectively if it if it is to exist at all. Okay, maybe that will never happen, um, but that's what we're we're pushing for here. Um, it's a community as well as an, as an infrastructure. Um, so there are social dynamics at play um, as well as um, the technical formats that we need to. Um, uh, consider in the data models. Um, it's about what it is, um, and it's about discussions, um, it's about real people taking um, specific responsibilities to make particular things happen, um, and all, the, all, the, all of the, the social practices which uh, lead towards data uh, creation, curation, uh, and consumption. Um, we're specifically interested in, in linked open uh, data approaches, but talking about those pieces of the puzzle, Pelagios focuses on notions of place. I mean, we're, we're, we try to scope what we do by emphasizing, by trying to do well one little piece, um, and then hopefully work like, like Ethan has just presented, um, that can feed into similar work or connect with similar work that focuses on other kinds of concepts. Um, and it also is particularly um, uh, the particular um, interest in um, the humanities, um, although that's not to say some of these approaches can't be used in, um, in, in other uh, domains as well. Um, it's about linking um, different kinds of heterogeneous and hello, hello, uh, and um, independently maintained uh, data. So that might be things like museum objects uh, or inscriptions. Uh, it could be texts, archaeological sites. Uh, we've done a lot of work on maps, on historic maps, over the past couple of years. Uh, currently, uh, we work with about 65 uh, institutional or individual partners from about 13 different countries. Um, and we've got about a million uh, annotations, that's references um, to particular places. Um, and I probably should say about a similar number of um, folks at various times have expressed interest in working with us, which is another reason why um, we're kind of moving to this more uh, community-driven model. Um, so what are those annotations? What is an annotation in Pelagios? Well, an annotation is really a link between two different uh, information domains. Um, there's a world we might think of as the kind of the, the online geo world of gazetteers, of place references, and those place references can have different relationships between them. So those might be the distance between places, they might be something like the travel time they take between places, uh, they may be political relationships yeah, or mariological relationships. The fact that a specific settlement uh, is situated or legally connected to um, a particular region. Meanwhile, there's another information domain uh, that we can loosely think of as, as the web. Um, that could be the web of documents, it could also be the web of data, but it's effectively information which is online and is globally uh, referenceable by URIs. And we heard about the, 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 the fundamental importance of URIs if we're to have a global mechanism. Uh, for referring to information. So what uh, Apologius is, is really dedicated to doing is trying to draw um, very small individual relationships that say in this particular uh, online resource there is a reference to a particular place and it's this place. It's not just a string of characters 
um, A-T-H-E-N-S, but it is the city of Athens, for example. Yeah, or Oslo, or Christiania. Christiania, I think, as it used to be known once upon a time. Uh, Pelagios is part of a, um, a much wider ecology of um, linked open data um, projects. And the, the reason we use uh, a, a metaphor of, kind of ecology or ecosystem, and indeed an emerging one, something that is not, is not yet fully formed but is, um, is, is, is growing dynamically, uh, is that each of these projects is not, is not trying to do everything in a particular space. So we can divide these at least into um, three kinds of, of, um, of, of uh, initiatives. Sometimes a particular project might be, might be trying to do multiple things, um, but we can think of concept schemes. We can think of projects that provide us uh, with URIs for particular places. And we can think of gazetteers like Pleiades or Passplace or the Getty uh, TGN. We can think of uh, concept schemes that might be about periods. So we heard about chronotology today, uh, periodo. Um, we can think of um, URIs for kind of canonical text services. We can think of projects like Seneschal, oh, I spelt that wrong, I think, uh, Seneschal and, uh, and Snap that might um, give us uh, and Snack, which should be on that list. Uh, URIs for particular people, for particular classification schemes, and so on. And each of these essentially gives us those crucial words that we can use to say, this is the thing um, that I'm talking about. That gives us the semantics, if you will. There are also resource curators, and those are people who are dealing with databases full of information, useful information and stuff, uh, or text or imagery, and putting that online. And that's often the kind of stuff that we want to, to kind of get to in the end. And then Pelagios is, again, just one of a number of projects uh, which are concerned with providing infrastructure that ties these things um, together, the resources on the one hand uh, with those controlled vocabularies uh, on the other. So hopefully um, the more of this that we see and the more that those um, projects play nicely with one another, the more that that web of linked data um, itself will start to grow together. And I'm quite excited this year um, to see projects which are starting to do that, where we're, we're not trying to either do everything in one big project or we're doing um, lots of things in one little project, if you like, but we're starting to see multiple projects being drawn together uh, in, in creating something more than the, the sum of their parts. So what is Pelagios, or what, what has, I should say, Pelagios uh, been doing uh, in its little corner of the world to do with um, geospatial? Well, one of the things we've developed over the past couple of years uh, is a, um, uh, a platform for annotation, for place-based annotation, uh, that's called Recogito. And Recogito essentially enables you uh, to take an online resource. It could be a text, it could be an image, uh, it could be a, a, a table um, from a database or something, or, or a gazetteer, and identify those references, first of all, um, very quickly and easily, and then map those to a gazetteer. So here we have a text. Uh, this is from uh, Herodotus, our, our favorite exam example here. Um, we have a digital text, and very rapidly I can go through and double click or select phrases uh, that appear to me to be a place reference. Um, and if, uh, if I want to be um, extra cautious, I can have these pop-up dialogues which sort of say, are you sure you want to do this? Uh, we prefer to use what we call rocket ship mode, as you can see up there, uh, and that removes uh, all those constraints and you can move through it very um, uh, rapidly. Um, we've actually found that you can do this um, pretty much a, if you consider the time that it takes to take an, a, a, an automated system and correct that uh, through manual um, correction, then we find that this is actually about as efficient um, as, as doing that. And in fact, uh, we were in Heidelberg uh, and um, with the, 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 the students there, uh, we managed to kind of get through, um, I think something like 10, 15,000, I think, in a couple of hours with a team of, uh, so uh, it, we, it's, it's, it's pretty quick. Uh, we can do similar things with, uh, with imagery. Here's a portal and chart. Uh, and again, very rapidly, we can mark up regions of an image. We can manipulate that image in various kinds of ways and identify references to particular places. Uh, we can transcribe those as well. We can add comments. Um, and similarly, we can also do the same thing uh, with tables. Once we've done that, uh, we were left with a large list of what we might call annotation stubs. So that's essentially uh, a reference with a string of characters uh, and some contextual surrounding information. 
And then uh, also with Recogito, we can use the system not to automatically a, 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 a link that to a gather tier, but to support the human process of interpretation so that I can decide whether this is a reference to this Alexandria or whether it's a reference to that Alexandria. And there are a number of ways in which we can facilitate that process so we can put the alternatives on a map. We might be able to sort of see that they're, you know, the place that we're looking at is adjacent to other places in the text. Uh, we can list a variety um, of near matches within a variety of different gazetteers. So we're not constrained to just using one gazetteer, but in fact, different, different use cases, we might want to uh, consider various ones. Uh, we have various options for saying, I'm, 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 I'm reasonably confident uh, in this particular interpretation, or I'm, I'm not confident here, or in fact, this isn't a place reference uh, whatsoever. Uh, and we can do things like add comments and tags as well. So each annotation, whilst very simple uh, in its basis, we can also add, add a surrounding cloud of information about that. Uh, very importantly, of course, also the person uh, who produced that interpretation, that annotation um, as well. So having produced those annotations, they then, uh, because of the magic uh, of uh, linked data, because of the magic of using uh, URIs, which might be aligned with one another, uh, we can start to do some fun things. So we can take a corpus of content. So here we have uh, a series of Greek geographic documents. Um, and here we can, we can um, identify the places there. We can look at which places were most frequently referred to in that corpus of uh, Greek material, uh, perhaps not uh, surprisingly, uh, perhaps surprisingly, Sparta is actually more commonly, uh, at least in the material that we were looking at, uh, referred to than Athens, but they're both head and shoulders above the rest. Um, we can use things like heat mapping to show not only the kind of the breadth, the, the scope of which these places refer to, but also the, the intensity, if you like. Again, not unsurprisingly, uh, the Greek tradition tends to focus on uh, the Eastern Mediterranean, uh, the Black Sea, and the uh, Aegean in particular. Um, we've developed another system uh, to demonstrate what can be done by aggregating uh, when we aggregate this content together. So Pelagios annotations can be produced anywhere, they can be hosted anywhere, um, but if we want to search across them, then we have to demonstrate the simplicity of taking those different um, uh, RDF data sets and drawing them um, together easily. And we can use technologies like Void, uh, which was mentioned um, earlier on today, I think Carsten might have mentioned it. Um, as a means that not only Pelagios, but other projects as well, can sort of harvest that information very quickly, combine it together, um, and then start using um, platforms like our uh, pair player search uh, uh, um, service here, where we can search for a particular phrase or place um, and see what kinds of places it's been associated with. Um, and if we have temporal information associated with these annotations as well, um, then we can start filtering um, by period. We can stick it on different kind of base maps. Um, we can have direct hyperlinks and imagery um, that drills back to the original content. And of course, a crucial thing to remember about linked data is it doesn't require people to, we doesn't require us to have a portal uh, where you know, one, one, a, a, a research environment where you have to do everything in one space, you can have something that can take you back to um, to that original content. Uh, yes, a little bit more about heat mapping here. Um, so if we're interested in a particular place, um, all of this is, we can you know, dynamically generate links back through to um, all of those different uh, online, independent, heterogeneous resources that refer to a particular place. And because it's linked data, we can do the reverse. Okay? So linked data doesn't, doesn't require you to have one particular point of entry in fact, you can have widgets. Uh, so here we have hyperlinks, for example, uh, in the Heidelberg epigraphic database. Uh, we have a really nice um, pop-up called uh, JavaScript pop-up called AllJS, uh, developed. Um, Ethan, Ethan were you? I kind of Sebastian uh, Heath and I can't remember. So I, I, anyway, fantastic. If you look at, if you go to the ancient world, sorry, uh, the ISOR papers, um, the Institute for the Study of Ancient Worlds online journal. If you mouse over a place reference, you'll get this pop-up, which will give you um, a nice uh, map of the place, again, and links through to material about it. Uh, and then open context is an example of using the API, the Pelagios API, to again draw out automatically and then embed within their own websites links to a curated set of resources associated with particular places. Um, and it's a REST style API that you can call um, through uh, a, a URL-like um, call. 
Um, and for those of you who are um, who are interested in who, who like um, geospatial technologies like GIS, one of the nice things about uh, using annotating imagery, so we've been working portal and charts, is where you can also record things like the coordinates on an image for where that particular annotation is. And that, because things like portal and charts use non-geodetic systems uh, to represent the world, I, they don't fit nicely into GIS, you can treat the image itself as its own geodetic system. Okay, so we can then start, we can take a GIS, we can use a portal and chart, and then we can start tying in all sorts of kind of other information into the portal and chart image. We don't have to require us to do the same thing. Uh, we don't have to tie everything into Google Maps. Um, a recent development, uh, some of you may be familiar with, but the IIIF framework uh, means we can do the same kind of thing with web mapping. So we can actually use all sorts of imagery uh, as mechanisms for tying um, data together. How am I doing for time? Am I... Perfect, yeah, that's great. Okay, okay so that's a, a background on what Pelagios um, <coughs> has been doing. Um, so what's the, what's the future? Where, where are we going from here? Um, well, we've just been awarded a new grant from the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, very, uh, who very generously um, supported us in um, further decentralizing, and I should emphasize that Pelagios has, has um, been, uh, the decentralization has been an essential component of Pelagios from its beginning. Uh, but in, to, to further decentralize it in three ways. So some of this, and, and I'd like to emphasize these in, in just a moment, uh, is social. Uh, we're establishing 10 special interest groups, uh, or SIGs, um, which will essentially be the kind of the beating heart uh, of what Pelagios does um, henceforth. Um, and they themselves will, will um, drive the, the new Pelagios Commons Committee, which will be responsible for um, thinking where we, where we go next. Um, there's going to be some more um, decentralization in terms of technical um, aspects. So uh, Recogito currently is an individual hosted platform, um, although you can download the source code uh, from GitHub. Um, we're going to make that easier to do things like one-click install, as well as having an open hosted service where people can um, annotate all sorts of materials. Uh, and we also want to look at integrating Parapleo with other services as well. Um, and some of the work, again, that Ethan presented is exactly the kind of thing we'd like to see um, pair of player working with um, uh, nicely. And then um, finally we're also looking at, at sustainability issues. So when we think of ourselves as being part of an ecology it becomes very important for us to think what are the specific services in terms of code, in terms of uh, community forums, in terms of running platforms and so on that it's essential that we maintain and which are the things that might perhaps be maintained better by another organization or another group. So we want to avoid um, ourselves either reinventing wheels, um, trying to do things which other people are doing um, instead, um, and thinking for the long term. So that we, um, the really important thing about these ecologies is that you, you, you don't try to do everything, you try to do a small number of things and then you try to make sure that those things are there for people when they need them. So the new governance structure of Pelagios essentially uh, um, will be run by a commons committee composed of the investigative team uh, who you saw on the, the first slide, um, as well as representatives, the coordinators um, from the special interest groups um, themselves. Um, this is uh, mathematically inaccurate because currently there are, there are 10 special uh, interest groups uh, and for those of you who have uh, a sufficient number of fingers and uh, we'll see that the number of, um, of, of members from these groups will uh, greatly outnumber the investigative team. So really the future of Pelagios is in the hands um, of the special interest groups uh, and we have a sustainability advisory board as well um, just to stop us kind of like all from, from racing over the edge of a cliff uh, if we get too, too uh, excited about things. Um, what are the, the special interest groups? Well, we started with 10. We don't know which of these are going to take off uh, and really get rolling. Uh, we imagine that some will be very, very successful. You know, others may sputter along um, and, um, <clears throat> and finally be deprecated. And there is space for us uh, to create new special interest groups along the way if they're not sufficiently covered. But we've essentially divided them into two, uh, two kinds. So five of them have a broadly uh, a, a spatio-temporal theme. Uh, so ancient Greek and Roman, because uh, Pelagio started uh, with an emphasis on the classical world. So quite a lot of the people that we work with have an interest in those, uh, those periods. Um, medieval, Byzantine, and Islamic. Um, East Asian, um, which I think also uh, will cover, um, say, so Central Asia, uh, Australasia, and so on. Again, as long as that makes sense for that, for that particular group. 
Uh, and then modern, which is really for anything after 1500. Um, clearly, that's a huge space, and it will depend, again, um, who gets involved and where that goes, whether or not we need to start dividing that into other groups. There's also five special interest groups related to particular kinds of issues, if you like. Um, I'll actually work here in reverse order, so maritime, um, because the notion of placing things in an aquatic space is quite different from, from the way that we think about places uh, in terrestrial space. The way we move around them, the way they're appropriated, the way they're conceptualized by people um, can be very uh, variable. Um, uh, Valeria will be delighted to hear about the, the micro region SIG. Uh, so, you're, yes, you're not. Yes, okay, great. Yes, so, uh, yes, there's lots of people who are interested in doing really similar work um, who I think could learn an awful lot from, uh, from what you've been doing um, for a whole range of cities uh, who've approached us in the, in the past. We're not just interested in cities. Um, obviously, again, Sicily, a perfect example. There might be smaller regions um, where, but where we need much more detail um, than at, at settlement level. Gazetteers is an area where um, Pelagios has um, long tried not to... Uh, gazetteers, Pelagios can only work when gazetteers exist. And on the other hand, Pelagios does not feel like it, it, is, it is the role of Pelagios to tell gazetteer providers what they need to be doing. Um, but what we have done over the years and will hopefully continue to do is work with them both um, as a primary uh, consumer to say if you're going to produce a gazetteer, these are the kinds of things that make it easier for us to use for, for linked data purposes and also for the purposes of alignment. Thinking about what gazetteers are already there, how can they be connected together, where do they need augmenting or perhaps are the gaps in coverage that would be better served by the production of a new gazetteer. So thinking about those, those issues. Archaeology uh, is a crucial one because again for, partly for the gazetteer issues that I, I raised as a question earlier on today. Archaeology is often interested in very specific sets of spatial coordinates rather than the more kind of conceptual association um, with a particular settlement or a particular street and, and, and so on. Um, so thinking about the mechanisms of, of how do we deal with um, issues of, um, uh, of say kind of coordinate based information versus gazetteers, how do we deal with some of this, this, the data sensitivity which, which uh, archaeologists often face in linked data. Uh, again, it's a space for those discussions. And then finally, the Link Pasts group uh, is really thinking about the whole um, discussions with how Pelagios connects together with all of those really other uh, exciting uh, projects within that wider um, ecology of projects thinking about Link Data for Heritage. Uh, we have a new website. Uh, it's not this ugly, or at least it's, currently it is this ugly, but that's because we've only uh, recently set it up. Structurally, the information is there, and if you want to uh, log on, you can uh, sign up to as many of those special interest groups as you would like. Uh, but we're having, currently having an aesthetic overhaul, um, so um, we've got the builders in at the moment, uh, for which we um, apologize. But in the next couple of weeks, it should shape up uh, very nicely, having seen the, the wireframes. It's looking really good. Um, there's also, again thanks to the Mellon, uh, money available um, in, in two particular forms. So we're going to have a call each year, this year and next year, uh, for what we call resource development grants. Um, those are, it's in, they're in pounds, which is why this is an approximate figure uh, in euros. Um, but essentially we calls for uh, proposals for um, small development projects. Um, it can be coding, it can be the production of something like a gazetteer or doing a particular piece of work. And that will really be based on a value for money for how much does this benefit the wider community, okay, rather than a, a, you know, an individual project. Each workshop, there's also funds available for, uh, sorry, for each SIG to hold its own event. That can be a hack fest, it can be um, a workshop, um, it can be whatever, you, whatever you, you know, a code crunch on a particular thing. Whatever that special interest group wants to do, there's money uh, there to, to support them meeting in, in person. Uh, and we're also going to have a linked past conference this December and next December. Uh, we had one last year, uh, last summer, that was very successful. Um, and it's an opportunity really to, to bring people together who are interested, uh, again, in, in, in helping that ecology uh, work together um, even better than it already uh, appears to. So, uh, thank you to the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation in particular, who are making um, this all possible. Uh, previous funders, uh, JISC uh, and the HRC. Um, and um, especially all of our, our partners, people who've worked together with us over the years to make that data possible. Come and find us at our new website, uh, tweet about us, uh, and thank you all for listening.